way that I handle esoteric money is I teach people to raise their energy. I teach you to become more life force, more power. And then when you do that, people will be pulled to you. People will show up. They're going to crawl over the walls and under the doors, and they're going to lower themselves in through the ceiling, and they'll, they will be there. And when they show up, what you have to do is bill them. You have to have a way of billing these people so that you can basically make money. And that means being organized, having a product or a service or something that you can give to these people when they show up in your life. For them, for you to raise your energy and have all these people show up and then you haven't got a way of working it with them, you won't have the abundance, you won't have the creativity, and you won't have an energy pattern that will go all the way. And basically, some of you are going to need lots of money. You're going to need loads and loads of the stuff in order for you to buy those experiences and to create the changes that you hope for yourself. When you look at the physical plane, you can understand that it isn't designed for people to be rich. If we divided all the wealth up in the world among all of the people, okay, in fact, everybody would be millionaires. But the system is so designed that a few people have the wealth, and the rest of the people do not have the wealth. And because it is designed like that, and because it's come down from thousands and thousands of years, the common man has to put in a certain amount of transcendent energy to pull himself or herself out of a system that isn't designed to assist you. I mean, imagine if you could go to work and in one week you could earn, let's say, $2 million. And you think, oh, Friday, I think I'll retire from here on out. The system isn't designed like that. But the way that the system is designed is that if you work really, really hard, it will spit out just enough cash to keep you just above what I call the revolution level. You know, where you're not out in the street tearing the system apart, but they fed you just enough to keep you going so that you don't blow away the system. The world that we live in is just owned by a few people. You know, let's say 500, 1,000 families own the entire world, okay? And they also own the governments, they own the societies, they own the banking systems, they own all the financial institutions, they dictate what interest you'll pay, how much rent you'll pay, what mortgage terms you'll receive, you know, what your car payments are. They decide everything for you. And they also decide how much money the average man in the street will have. And if you are, let's say, a, a small businessman and you've opened a business, you're going to open it in that kind of energy pattern, in an energy pattern of control, restriction, keep everybody bottled down, give them a little bit so they don't revolt, but don't give them too much because we don't want these people coming up out of the pack, becoming too self-empowered and starting to take away the, the, the control that the big people have. And so as you look at that, if you open a business and you're this small businessman and you've got a creative idea, you can only earn money from the energy of those people around you. And if all of those people are like close to starvation or just making it through or just squeaking through, how much disposable income have they got to buy your product? And so we're all affected, whether we're independent business people or whether we work for one of the big institutions or we work for the system, we're all basically affected by, by the fact that the whole thing is not designed for the common man. And you've heard me say that many, many times in this seminar and in other seminars, that the world is not designed for the people. It's designed to keep the institutions up. It's designed to keep the philosophies up. It's designed to support the governments. And you, as the ordinary working people, are always sent the bill. You, you get to pay for everything. If there's a mistake, you get to pay for it. You know, if there's some kind of disaster, you pay for it. And as you look at that, you can understand that the only way that you can pull out of those feelings and out of this conditioning that basically is absolutely designed to hold you down is by you having a force of will that is stronger than the force of will that is trying to control you. And you have to create inside of you an energy pattern a bit like, well, imagine if you were like swimming along in a swimming pool and you're, you're down at the bottom of the swimming pool and you're holding your breath and like swamp thing like grabs you by the ankle, you know? How much would you want to swim to the surface? You know, how much effort would you put into getting up and getting out of that and getting a breath of air? And for some of us, that's how much effort we have to put into becoming financially independent, mastering money. Because our societies do not teach us power. They teach us that we are weak, that we have guilt, that we're useless, that we're supposed to support everything else, we're supposed to send money to everything else, that none of this is really for us, and that if we do too well, somehow that pulls us away from being godly or righteous or good. And of course, that's a bunch of hooey, because the life force or the God force is absolutely abundant. It'll give you anything that you believe in and more. You only have to look at nature. You can look at a cherry tree or an apricot tree, and it has more apricots on there than you can ever eat. It has more cherries on it than you can eat. You know, and when you look at it, it has that splendid abundance naturally. 
You know, if a man des designed an apricot tree, it would have like two itty-bitty apricots at the top of the tree, and they'd be out of reach, and they'd be a little stale, and you'd have to have permission to go climb it, and a certificate for when you got it, and then a third of the apricot would then belong to somebody else, and eventually you'd wind up with just the pit and a little bit of apricot, you know? And that's how the system is designed. When you look at it, when you look at the physical plane, we are here as these transcendent beings, as these infinite beings inside a body, and you have the ability through your thought forms and through your feelings to absolutely redirect and change your life. I believe that you're not your body, that you're not your mind, that you're not your sexuality, that you're an infinite being inside a body, and that you took on the limitations of the physical plane in order for you to be able to transcend them. The physical plane, the humans that are on this physical plane, are basically like in a circle. And the circle is created by the electromagnetic waves of the brain that set up this field or this force field that we all live in. And that force field cuts us off from the abundance of the life force. It cuts us off from the God force. It cuts us off from other dimensions of existence and makes us or gives us the illusion that what we see